Hey everyone. So with the release of Reason 11 last year, there's obviously been a lot of talk about the rack as a VST and now an AU plugin. And with Reason Studios teasing MIDI out in the next update, uh, it's really set to become a super powerful MIDI and player toolbox, as well as an instrument and effect for your favorite sequencer. Now that said, I'm sure it's no great secret that my favorite sequencer is Reason itself. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick blast through the new devices and features, and just highlight some cool and interesting things that can be done with them. So what I've done here is just prepare some basic examples in this project, and then we can look at the different modes on the new devices. Now, if you've been a long time user of Reason, you'll probably be familiar with the old half rack devices, such as the Chorus and Flanger, the Phaser, Unison and Filter. And of course, these are still really useful devices in their own right. But now we have these two new full size devices, Quartet and Sweeper. And these are super versatile effect units that go way beyond what their name suggests. So first up, Quartet. Now being a chorus device, this is gonna be your go-to for just adding a bit of width and depth to your sounds using the classic chorus mode, such as on this electric piano sound. And of course it has all the standard features that you'd expect to find on a chorus unit, such as delay time, modulation depth and rate, feedback, width, and a dry wet mix. There's also a BBD or bucket brigade delay mode, which has a slightly more chaotic and noisy sound and is really well suited for adding some shimmer and width to otherwise flat sounds. So let's check out this basic melody on top of this drum and bass loop. So in this mode, you're able to modulate the delay time using a noise mod source, in addition to the basic LFO style controls, which you can find in mod depth and mod rate. With FFT mode, things get really interesting. Here the signal is analyzed and then resynthesized into a number of partials or sine waves, which can then have their frequencies modulated to create a super rich and complex ensemble effect. So let's check out this dry square wave bass both before and after. FFT mode has an adjustable window of time for analysis. So smaller values are generally good for percussive content and larger values capture more of the low end, but also smooth out the transients. Another great feature of FFT mode is that it can be applied selectively to a user-definable frequency range. So in this example, I'm gonna use Quartet to soften up the top end of an acoustic drum pattern. So there's a lot of situations where this might come in handy. For example, rounding off the top end of a top loop, or perhaps adding some shimmer and sparkle to the overhead mics on your drum kit. Finally, we have grain mode, which much like the grain instrument in Reason, uses granular synthesis to slice the incoming audio up into hundreds of fragments and then stitch them all back together, modulating things like pitch and start position. So in this example, I'm just gonna apply a quartet and a simple RV7000 reverb to this Blade Runner style synth lead.
So even something as simple as a bare, naked sawtooth can be transformed into a lush and wide sound using nothing but a quartet and a reverb. So now let's turn to this sweeper modulation effect. Like quartet, sweeper has a few modes of operation, and we'll start with the phaser mode. I'm going to apply the effect to this basic monotone bass patch, and then just tweak some parameters as I go, such as the number of phaser stages, frequency, feedback, and bandwidth. Now of course the real power of Sweeper is as the name suggests, it's in the way you modulate or control the frequency of the effect. So we can use the built-in LFO to control the frequency of the phaser. Or instead of a simple repeating LFO, we could use this fully editable envelope section, which you might recognize from Europa and Grain. There's also an audio follower mode, which responds to the incoming volume of signal, and then uses that to modulate the frequency of the effect. So to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna bring the decay and release times down on the bass. And of course this functionality works across all three modes, so we could control the frequency of a flanger or of a filter by using either or both of these modulation sources. Now obviously, up to this point, we've only focused on the front of each device. But of course, this being reason, you also have that back panel functionality. So in this example, I've taken the gate output of a kick drum, and every time a kick drum happens on my 808 module, it's gonna trigger that modulation envelope, which in turn is gonna control the frequency on the filter. Now one other really cool thing that you can do with the sweeper is to use the phaser section as a resonator. And this is especially useful for physical modeling of things like metallic or ringing sounds. So for instance, we can turn this basic square wave and noise into a more realistic kind of clanging sound just by using the phaser with the maximum number of stages and high feedback. And again, because we have that back panel freedom, I could extract the notes being played from an RPG-8 and then use that to control the frequency of the resonator. I even use sweeper on the master bus section sometimes, either to create filter in or out effects, or just to use the drive section to add some crunch and grit to the overall sound. And of course you could very easily modulate these for a section of the song by just holding option, and then clicking on the parameters that you want to control.
So you can see that both Quarter and Sweeper are actually incredibly versatile multifunction devices that could be used for everything from subtly sweetening or widening sounds to creating strange and weird modulations and even as part of your master chain for things like filters and transitions. There's also great news for those of you who like the feel and function of the SSL style plugins but want to use them in the rack as the compressor, EQ and master bus compressor are all now available as rack devices so you can build your own channel strip inside of the rack. And then obviously remember that you have the back panel connections as well, which gives an advantage over using these modules within the mixer. And allows for CV control of things like EQ bands, or the ability to output CV from things like compressor gain reduction, and then use those to control other things within the rack. To wrap up, let's just take a quick look at some of the new workflow features. And one of my favorites is the ability to draw in multiple notes at the current snap setting, which can be linked to the zoom level by using the grid option. So you'll see that as I zoom in and out, the snap setting changes as well. And this is super useful for programming in things like snare rolls or glitches. To use multi-draw mode, you just hold Option and Command, which you'll see is different from the normal draw tool. There's also a new modifier for shifting notes up and down by octaves, which you can do by holding Shift, Command, and then using the arrow keys. Now I'm sure the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed a little while ago that you can also draw in curved automation. And this is fantastic for making things like risers or filter automation, and it just tends to sound a lot more musical than a linear automation line. And of course, one of my favorite things about the automation in Reason is that it can be handled much in the same way as note and audio clips. So you can reverse or time stretch or even time compress. And the cool thing is that it maintains the shape of that curve in the process. And of course there's a couple of other cool things lurking in there such as the ability to mute individual notes uh, within a note clip. And you just do this by selecting notes and pressing M. And it's a really great way of trying different things out within a note clip but without having to commit to actually removing notes and then having to put them back in again later if you decide that you want to keep them. And finally, it's now possible to do crossfades. I know it's something that people have been asking for for a really long time, and it's super easy to use. You just drag one clip on top of another, right click and choose crossfade. So I'll stop there for now. Like I said, Reason is still my sequencer of choice, and I couldn't even begin to say how many songs, library albums, and sound design projects that I've completed over the last few years entirely within the program, and you can actually check out a long play of some work that I did for Red Bull on this channel, which I'll link below. At some point I'll add some more of those kinds of videos just to showcase some of the other stuff that I've been working on. Now obviously if you're attached to your current sequencer then you can take the rack with you as a VST or AU, which I'll also cover in another video. 
but remember you also get the standalone with it and that's going to continue to grow alongside the plugin so definitely check it out in standalone mode if you haven't already. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any comments or questions just drop it down below.